This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and who doesn't love orange, right? All right, this is the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G McLaren. Say that three times fast, or even once fast. It might seem like OnePlus is spamming us with phones, but not so much. It's a little confusing. We have the OnePlus 7 Pro, and we have the OnePlus 7T, and now we have them both in the same phone. What does that mean? It's basically the OnePlus 7 Pro, but with 5G, and from the 7T model, we get the 30T fast charging, the Snapdragon 855, but with the interesting addition of T-Mobile's 5G, which is available many places. They say everywhere, 200 million people covered. It's not quite that, but with their December 6th launch, they have quite a lot of coverage. We're going to look at it now. But first, a shout out to Linkit Security and their IP Buddy camera, the sponsor for this video. The camera features motion tracking, SD card storage, 1080p video recording, cloud storage, and a Wi-Fi connection. Use the link in the description to save 10% and get a free SD card. Back to our review. So we're not a stranger to the McLaren edition of OnePlus phones, and that means you get the papaya orange accents. And this time you get a pattern on the back of the glass that matches McLaren's steering wheels. Cool. You get a theme on the phone that's kind of a dark theme with orange accents. You get a sleep clock that's sort of like an analog speedometer, I guess. You know, you get the idea. And also you get actually a really nice, sturdy, but not too bulky carbon fiber and Alcantara case in the box. You will never find this case most likely though. Let me show you. So just like the OnePlus 7 Pro that this so closely resembles that in fact, cases for the 7 Pro work on this phone. We're talking pretty much physically identical. You've got the improved CPU, but the most interesting thing here is the Qualcomm X55 5G modem. Now 5G is a little confusing. One of the reasons I'm doing this video because I also want to talk about the state of 5G right now. I think T-Mobile is in the United States is doing the most interesting and compelling thing right now, which is to give us sub-6, which means sub-6 gigahertz in terms of bands, 5G. So in this case, it's on 600 megahertz. What that means for T-Mobile isn't just that you're getting 5G, but as 5G phones become more commonly available, and they sell more models and so on in 2020, you get a lot of building penetration. And you get the speed boost that they're conservatively saying is 20% faster, but we're finding almost twice as fast right now because there's not a lot of people on the 5G network. Speed boost as well. So that makes it pretty compelling. And also, if you're in the place where you're buying a phone right now and you don't want to pay $1,300, for a, a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 plus 5G or any number of other phones on other carriers that are the other kind of 5G that we'll talk about too. Uh, this is a safe bet to the future. Not only does it do that 600 megahertz band that T-Mobile is using right now today, but it also supports the 2.5 gigahertz, what's called mid-band 5G, that Sprint has. So obviously if the merger between T-Mobile and Sprint actually goes through, that makes this phone a lot more powerful in terms of speeds and in terms of coverage. So as you're getting a little more confused maybe about 5G now, there's three things. There's that low sub-6 band. There's that mid-band that we talked about. And then there is millimeter wave, otherwise known as ultra-wide band. So how that works is the one that's gotten the most press so far and has a very limited rollout is the millimeter wave 5G. So that one, if you're familiar with cell phone bands, and a lot of you probably are who watch our channels, you know that, well... We're talking you know, usually 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz, uh, 1900 megahertz, 2500 megahertz is the highest we go. So there's a spectrum that really isn't used for anything and it's less than ideal in a lot of ways. And that's what millimeter wave uses, the one that can reach up to maybe a gigabit if you've seen some of the speed tests, speeds for download. But the challenge is the higher you go up in frequency, well, data travels faster, that part's nice, but it doesn't penetrate anything, sometimes not even your hand. Forget buildings, indoor coverage. You remember how things used to be in the old days of cell phones? It's sort of like that. So I'm not real bullish right now on millimeter wave 5G, but this kind of coverage that can be rolled out very easily because it can be added to existing 4G LTE towers gives us a speed boost, gives us better coverage. I kind of like that. So what you have here is a forward-looking phone. If you're looking for a nice Android phone today, it's still $899 on T-Mobile. They have trade-in offers for $300 off. If you port a number over you might and trade in a decent phone, you might even get it for free with the usual over 24 monthly payments, rebates, yada, yada. The carriers do, which, you know, kind of sounds like a contract because carriers still have a way of doing it. But anyway, for $899, it's the cheapest one you can get right now. Other than Sprint's OnePlus 7 Pro 
not McLaren edition, not the 7T-ified version of it. And that one's $840, and that one also covers the same band. So it should work on T-Mobile and Sprint should the merger actually happen. Anyway, it's a good phone, Snapdragon 855 Plus, which is currently the fastest that's available, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.0 fast storage, no micro SD card slot, single nano SIM card slot, which is typical for US carriers. They don't give you dual SIM card slots. It's all the same specs, including the triple cameras, the 3X telephoto zoom lens, the 48 megapixel main camera, the wide angle lens, the pop-up selfie camera that can also be used for the not very secure kind of facial recognition, but it's there, the in-display fingerprint scanner that works very well, and the 1440p OLED display covered in 3D Gorilla Glass with, for better or worse, the curved sides. It's annoying if you use it without a case because side touches, accidental presses happen a lot with the case and not so much. Anyway, it's the highest resolution phone still, the Pro. And for those of you who are wondering if the 7T would herald in a new camera design that was here to stay, that round circular back, I guess not. So in terms of heat and battery life, which are concerns more for the millimeter wave, those super fast 5G phones that have very little coverage at this point in the United States, it's not as bad here. It's another reason that I think low and mid-band 5G is more interesting because you're not transferring so much data at once, it doesn't get so hot. We have a second generation Qualcomm X55 modem here, which helps as well. So the phone gets warm, it doesn't get burning hot, and we have pretty good coverage here in Texas. Texas generally has pretty good coverage, not many cell tower NIMBY people or anything like that. Not the fastest speeds, probably if you go to a Washington State near T-Mobile headquarters, you're gonna see the fastest speeds, but still, transferring a something like 176 megabits down is pretty darn exciting for most of us here. And the phone got warm, it didn't get hot. Battery life does take a little bit of a hit. Uh, the battery capacity is up ever so slightly from on the OnePlus 7 Pro. It is 4085 milliamps. But yeah, your, a 4G phone's gonna do mm, probably about 40 minutes to 30 minutes of screen on time better at this point. But still, for the better coverage, the faster speeds potentially, I can live with that right now. It's not terrible. It's not like millimeter wave phones that can't operate when it's hotter than 85 degrees Fahrenheit out and have really abysmal battery life. It's a pretty safe bet, that's what I'm trying to say. So that's the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren 5G. Long name. Good phone, though. Would I buy this phone? Yes, I would. Like I said, I'm kind of bullish. I'm, I'm looking forward to 5G and low and mid-band, and this gives us that without the pain of, well, terrible battery life, heat issues if it's warm outside, which God knows it always is here in Texas. You get the usual goodness of OnePlus. You get a near flagship kind of phone, no wireless charging, no official IP68 water resistance, though OnePlus does demo it taking a bath and a glass of water and surviving. But overall, it's fast. It has a beautiful OLED display, just like the 7 Pro did. All those things that are a plus, and it's a lot cheaper than other 5G phones. Now, in 2020, we're going to see even more. We might even see ones that support all three kinds of 5G. I have a feeling that's probably going to be a mess, though. I would stick with the low and mid-band models like this next year. Prices will eventually come down. Every time there's a new network technology, prices are high. But at least this one is not higher than competing flagship phones that are not 5G, which is a plus. Get it? One plus. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.